Shalom, Shalom, Israel is a topic that, you know, is one of the issues that I talk about, man. This is what I got to talk about because I feel it's still in my spirit. I had a whole three-hour conversation with a brother about how Jasher is wrong. But what he was coming with was just totally out of left field and out of nowhere. He was talking about how... He said, how did Jacob, Esau, and Abraham, he said, yeah, how did Jacob, Esau, Abraham, and Isaac meet each other? Um, you telling me that Jacob never met his grandfather? And that's who Abraham is to Jacob. You know what I'm saying? So simple stuff like that. That was 2,000 years. Like, brother, you don't even know the simple breakdown of Genesis. And take note that Genesis would be first in the Bible. Enoch would be the second book after that. Okay? Just, just to show y'all know. You know what I'm saying? And then they would put probably Jasher after that. You know what I'm saying? To let you know that it's going to re-hit on certain stories and give you the details that's not there. That's what Jasher does. That's all it does. It's just filling in the blanks of this, this story about Shem. Because you don't hear too much about Shem after, you know what I'm saying, um, the story of Noah. But Jasher fills these things in. This is Abraham and what he went through when he was with Nimrod. See, Abraham, you know what I'm saying, was in the same time as Nimrod. I had a fuck, I had an uh, argument with this idiot. <laughs> Excuse me. Salakia, you know what I'm saying? But I had an argument with an idiot telling me how that Esau couldn't have been in the time of Nimrod. Nimrod didn't, you know what I'm saying? But I had the proof and showed you that Abraham lived 175 years. He was trying to tell me Genesis 10 to Genesis 25 was 2,000 years. Like, brother, you're off, man. You don't even know the basic breakdown of the Bible. So what I'm going to try to tackle on this one is Enoch and Jasher and give you the validity of it and the nature of these reptilian human hybrids, the characteristics of them and why they act the way that they do because Enoch explains it, where demon spirits come from. These are heavy topics, but just, just so you know, the prophets, the apostles, they were all well versed in the book of Enoch. They all knew these things. And, but the problem is most people that talk about the book of Enoch and Jasher be off and they're looking at it from a Christian doctrine. So I'm gonna try to put it in the uh, prose production about, you know what I'm saying, you'll hear the white man talk about certain things that the uh, angels, the fallen angels, which were called the Watchers, you know what I'm saying, they taught to men, Azazel was one of the fallen angels, they had that um, name inside the uh, book, uh, movie, The Fallen with Denzel, um, but he taught uh, how to make swords and, you know what I'm saying, but the Most High, the Lord of Spirits, which the Book of Enoch calls the Most High, he tells you why he sent these angels among us, and I'm going to get into the scripture. The Lord of Hosts, Yahweh, okay, is... Okay, when he says the Lord of Hosts, that means he created the moon, the stars, the earth, the seas, you know what I'm saying? Everything that, him, that is in them is, okay, because he is the Ancient of Days, just like the Book of Enoch in the chapter 46 says, the Ancient of Days had white woolly hair, and that's what it calls him, the Ancient of Days, before time existed. i tackling this from a papacy, Christian, Catholic, faggot perspective, and saying, see how the devil angels went against God, because they did what they want to do. That's not what it's about. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what Enoch says, but that's what the devil says. Isaiah 45 and 7 says, I form the light, I create the darkness, I make peace, I create evil. Okay, I make the peace and the evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Before we get into the scriptures about the fallen angels, put this thing in perspective. There's a reason why God sent these evil angels among us. I said, stop limiting God. He does what he want to do when he want to do it. And don't care what you think. Go to Psalm 78, 49. He says, he cast upon them fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Now you're getting into fallen angels now, brother. Psalm 78, it says, Psalm 78, 49, he cast upon them fierceness and his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Once and for all, we're going to put this to rest. Who's in control of these Nephilim or fallen ones? Notice, there's a lot of people that are targeted by the U.S. government and going through this uh, programming. Uh, at this level that I am and a lot of people are going through it they're the ones that get an Enoch but I've noticed is a lot of target individuals be off man a lot of them are they being targeted that means the devil hates you and God hates you because a lot of them I met be off I'm not one of them if you read let's get into Enoch now Enoch 11 and this is this chapter specifically is talking about the archangel Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel. Okay? And they just give homage to God. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to give you an overview because I'm not going to, I can't read all this. But they're just giving praise to God and homage to God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days. Okay? And they, and they're, they're reverencing the Most High. And they're telling him that we know that you run all things, you do all things, all praises to the Most High. But 
the Azazel and Simjaza are the main leaders of the fallen angels, okay? And they taught these things to man. They did. They defiled mankind. They went into women and had giants, okay? And, and they're just telling the case before God. But the last verse in it was what I want everybody to focus on. And it says here in 11, it says, this is Enoch, right? Okay. Enoch 11 11 and it says and thou knowest all things before they come to pass and thou seest these things and thou did suffer them so you're allowing this to happen and this is what the archangels are saying to God They're, you're allowing this to happen and thou does not say to us what we are to do in regard to this so this is the angels talking to the most high the archangel his number one lieutenant look at they're doing all this what is, what's going on God you letting these fallen angels do all this stuff, but the problem is you ain't tell us what to do about it. You know what I'm saying? This is what's going on. God did this without even letting his main, you know what I'm saying, lieutenant, his main uh, leaders and captains and generals in the army of the Lord. He ain't let them know what he was doing. So the next chapter is getting into what God wants to be done. Okay? God's telling you, now get Noah, okay? The son of Lamech, tell him that he's going to escape him and his family apart, right? Now bring Azazel hand and foot and put him into darkness and opening in the desert, which is in Dudel. Okay, and cover him with jagged rocks and darkness. Well, just give me an overview. This is what I want you to do with Azazel on these fallen angels. Because they went into women, they created uh, giants. All right, we're gonna bind them up for the day of judgment where they're gonna burn in the lake of fire in the abyss of fire. Okay, but their seed still continues to catch wreck out here. Okay, wreak havoc. This chapter, the next chapter after that, God tells you why. He, he look, I'm gonna give you an overview. I can't read this. It. It's a lot. You know what I'm saying? But He just tells you why. And then the righteous shall escape and shall live till beget thousands of children. And this is after the day of judgment, after Azazel and all the damn fallen angels are in the damn um, abyss, burning with all the wicked. He's, this is what's going to happen because I did this. Okay, the righteous are going to beget thousands of children in their youth. And sh that's right. Okay, all desirable trees and plants and vineyards, and they shall come with an abundance of wine, right? And ship out a thousand, a measure of oil, right? You want this, right? This is what you want. 20 verse. And cleanse the earth from all uh, oppression and from all unrighteousness and from all sin and from all godlessness and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth. Destroy from off the earth. And all the children of men shall become, that's right, and all the children of men shall become righteous. Oh, doesn't doesn't that sound like you know all that people shall be righteous? Doesn't that sound like uh, was that Isaiah? You know, sir, Isaiah 60. Doesn't that sound like Yes, right. Uh, Hebrews 8. All our people shall be righteous. That's right. And all nations shall offer adoration and shall praise me. This is lining up with the scriptures. I don't care what you say. And praise me and shall worship me and all the earth shall be cleansed from defilement and from all sin and from punishment and from all torment. And I will never again send them. Okay, hold on. This is what God's saying. Okay, I'll never send them again upon y'all again upon the earth. You see what I'm saying? This has to happen. If you want thousands of children, if you want life everlasting, then it ha isn't there an old adage or an old saying that says things have to be bad before they get good? You don't understand the physics of creating universes, now do you? Continue reading when it says, And the earth shall be cleansed from the defilement and from the sin, and from the, all punishment, and from all torment. And I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation for forever. So if you want eternal life forever without having to give it up to some other nation or have to give it up to um, fallen angels or any kind of angel or anything, this has to happen. I'm going to send them among you to let them, let the earth know what wickedness is. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because... Yeah, how was I tells you that I'm coming back as in the days of Noah. So if you don't understand what was happening and fully understand what was happening in the days of Noah, oh, we know the story of Noah and the then he builds ark and then everybody was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody knows that. But like I said, there's way more to the story that's not being told to us, but it's too fishy why they wouldn't tell you that. It's because they don't want to reveal who they are. They're really demons in human flesh. And I would know because they're hissing in my head voice to skull. Um, let's get into the 15th verse of Enoch. All right, I'm not going to read it all, but we'll try to read as much as I can. And it says, any answer that's sent unto me. This is, okay, before we get into this, this is an um, overview of it. Uh, Enoch is meeting up with the the Watcher Angels, the Fallen Angels, who have, they're the original ones who made the mistake, you know what I'm saying, um, of going into women 
and defiling himself with women and, be, and made giants. So now what they want to do is make a petition to God so they can get forgiveness from God. Oh, I'm so sorry, God. Uh, Enoch, talk to God and tell him this and give him this position for us. So this was going on. And he answered and said, and, and, and Enoch's heard their petition. And now this is God talking to Enoch and, and Enoch 15. And he answered and said unto me, and I heard a voice, fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness, approach hither and hear my voice. Um, it says, and go and say, read it for yourself, and go and say to the watchers of heaven who has sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. It goes on, wherefore ye have left the high, holy, and eternal heaven and lain with women, and defiled yourself with the daughters of men. Just like it says in Genesis 6 and 4, right? And taken to yourself wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants. Also, right? That's what they did. And there's evidence of them all around the world as your sons. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living and eternal life, you have defiled yourself with the blood of women and begotten children with the blood of flesh and as the children of men and have lusted after flesh and blood as those also who die and perish. Drop down to eight. And it says, and now the giants who are produced from the spirits of flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. Okay, so this is where demons come from. This is where they come from, from the, the souls of the giants. Okay, this is where demons come from. Okay, it says, and now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have been proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men, and from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on the earth and evil spirit, spirits shall they be called. It is what a T.I. is. That they want to make it, you know what I'm saying? This is what they, they're demons. So that's what they want to deceive. Demon means, devil means a deceiver, deception. So why wouldn't the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is to convince the world he didn't exist or how he exists or where he came from? Of course, he's a devil. So you don't believe it because that's what you've been programmed by these devils your whole life to believe. Let's drop down to 11. Enoch 15, 11, and the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle and work destruction on the earth. Look at the earth. OK, look at the earth from the time your mama grew up. Now look at it now. You know what I'm saying? Look at the earth. OK, worse and worse and wax and worse. The love of many shall wax cold. Jesus told you what would be the events and the state of the earth when he comes back. You know what I'm saying? But when I come back, will I find faith on the earth in the days of Noah? Okay, it would let's see what these demon spirits do. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger, never satisfied, implacable, and pleasable. Okay, never said that's why people that are demon possessed have addictions, sex addictions, drug addictions, because it's never enough. There's possessed with demons, and these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against women because they proceed from them makes sense let's go on to enoch uh 16 first verse it says from the days of the slaughter and the destruction and death of the giants from the souls whose flesh the spirit have gone for shall destroy without incurring judgment okay that's what they do thus shall they destroy until the day of consummation the great judgment until judgment day they are going to wreak havoc this is what they're going to do okay look at the world Okay, look at it. Worse and worse. In which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless. Yet yeah, shall they be wholly consummated. And now as the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them. This is most I still talking. Who had been aforetime in heaven. Say unto them. This is what God's response is to their petition. Okay. You have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not been revealed to you. So I didn't even show you everything because I knew what I made you for. You see what I'm saying? I didn't even show you all because I knew what you was going to do because I told you to go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? You have been in heaven, but all the mysteries had not been revealed to you and you knew worthless ones. So what did they teach? Uh, sorcery. They taught abortion. They taught weapons of war. They taught, you know what I'm saying? Astrology, drug use. You know what I'm saying? This is what these fallen angels taught, man, right? But God said, you knew worthless ones. These are the mysteries that you taught. They're worthless, just like you. Okay, and this is my answer to your response. This is my answer to your petition for my forgiveness. Okay, and you knew worthless ones. And these, these in the hardness of their hearts 
you have made known to women. And through these mysteries, women and men work much evil on earth. Say to them, therefore, you have no peace. Okay? God is angry with the wicked every day. He created them just so he can judge them. Doesn't that sound like Esau and his whole situation on this planet? Look at him. Don't they do that? To, look at what they do to niggas. Give them no options, no jobs, no nothing, and put drugs on every, and put Tony Montana out in 85. And what you think is gonna happen? And then arrest you for being becoming a drug dealer. They're trying to play God. I will be like the most high. This lines up with the scripture. I don't care what you say. You haven't read it. And you don't want to get into it because it's too scary for you. Well, guess what? God ain't taking no scary niggas with him to the kingdom of heaven. Guess what? We're going, we were going to take over the universe. And if you think there ain't no scary monsters on other universes, I don't... Yeah, we about to take and catch wreck on them too and conquer that and take their stuff. Point is, God don't want no weak men that can't deal with the full truth and nothing but the truth. Ain't nothing in Enoch that doesn't line up with the most high. Okay, and another point that I wanted to make is, is that Enoch tells you specifically that I have been shown things that no other prophet, another, no other man of God had been shown. So that's why you're hearing things in here about Enoch that probably you won't have a preset for because Enoch was shown things no other prophet was ever shown. So that if that's your excuse, you can let it go, man.